Welcome to the Professional Book Nerds Podcast. This is Joe. Before we dive into today's episode, remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you do your podcast listening. It really helps spread our podcast with folks who might be interested just like you. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at ProBookNerds. And you can send an email to professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com with suggestions for the future, feedback, whatever you'd like. If you just want to say hi or send in your reading challenge. With that, I've got Emma here with me today, and we are sharing our October book picks. Emma, hi. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good. I have coffee and a croissant. How are you doing? <laughs> I just finished my coffee. It's an adorable Barbie mug, and <gasps> uh, I know it's from the, oh, the Barbie truck tour. I love that mug. Yeah, isn't it fun? I love That's a, so cute. I love a glass mug and it's that like double walled. So it looks like it's floating. Well, listeners, we'll post a photo <laughs> on our Instagram. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It was a good time. Uh, yeah. I, I love the Barbie truck tour. I went last year, went again this year. It's, I, I'm a sucker I, for marketing. <laughs> I love that it's a repeat thing though as well. Yeah, well, and they rebrand every year. They pick like a new theme. So last year was for the celebration of Malibu Barbie. Mm -hmm. uh, this year was the Dream House. So, Ooh, in the yeah. year of the Barbie movie. In the year of the Barbie movie, people I were much more appropriately dressed this year. There's a lot more pink in the in the crowd. I love that. So before we dive in, we did it last month. We're going to do it again yes. this month. I liked it. Emma liked it. Hopefully y'all liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so just a heads up. For books that are coming out this month that we are interviewing for, um, I'm going to do mine first just because I mentioned it last month. So just a quick note, this mm -hmm. month will be my interview with Adam Sass about Your Lonely Nights Are Over, but the book did release in September. So it was mentioned last month. Still figuring out <laughs> how we'll do these kind of like duplicates, but there you go. And then Emma will be talking to Cassandra Clare, I'm so excited, about Sword Catcher. So Sword Catcher will be out this month. Yes, I'm so excited, which is the only reason why I'm not mentioning it in my picks here, because we don't <laughs> want to just talk about the same thing. And I will also do one more caveat. I'm not mentioning Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscolco because I have mentioned it in like three of our previous episodes um, <laughs> recently. So I am looking forward to that October release, but wanted to give y'all some fresh picks as well. I do love this as a chance to sneak in some extras, but also like save our detailed talk time for books that you're not just about to get more info on anyway. Exactly. Emma, do you want to kick us off? I would be happy to kick us off with a surprise pick, I think. I don't know if anyone will expect me to pick this, but I am very, very excited for this book. And that is Lucky Me by Rich Paul. This comes out on October 10th. Y'all. The pull quote on this book is from Jay-Z, just a casual close friend. And the foreword of this book was written by LeBron James. Um, so if you don't know who Rich Paul is, you likely know who Jay-Z and LeBron James are. And so this is just such a fascinating book. This follows Rich Paul. Everybody knows his story if you know anything about him in the sports world, the entertainment world. He's dating Adele. Um, He's friends with LeBron. And so I'm just going to read this and stop rambling. But there's a story about Rich Paul that everyone knows. A 21-year-old kid from Cleveland who sells sports jerseys out of his car meets a high school basketball phenom named LeBron James at an airport. The two become friends and forge a decades-long partnership that reinvents the business of sports. That random meeting might seem like the lucky break that changed Paul's life but a moment of good fortune means nothing without the struggle that gets you there. And the truth is Paul has always been lucky. Rich Paul became a gambler at an early age. His fast mind and gift for finding an edge made him a devastating dice roller who could hold his own with grown men, win big and walk away alive. Shooting dice wasn't just a pastime. It was a way to earn money for his family as his mother struggled under the weight of drug addiction. He learned the secret science of dice in the same place he found all the lessons of his young life, the corner store his father operated. 
the center of his neighborhood's frantic action. Paul's father had another family but kept his son close. Working at the store, Paul dreamed of becoming a star athlete, but the streets were where he thrived, building a lucrative enterprise on shaky ground. When he found himself at a dangerous crossroads, he summoned the teachings of his past to create a different future. Readers will follow the riveting journey of a young, rich Paul, narrated by the Paul of today, who looks back with wit and insight, drawing out the lessons he learned at every stage about business, people, and the values that led to success. It's an inspiring story of the luck that's all around us if we know where to look. And I watched a talk with him and his editor, I believe, and it was absolutely fascinating to hear more of his story. So I personally cannot wait for this book out on October 10th. I also love the Cleveland connection, and it does give me a little bit of cred with my husband. I know a little bit more about sports. So that is Lucky Me by Rich Paul out October 10th. Oh, love it. And the Adele connection. Yeah, right. (laughs) I'm sorry. Like that can't be, that can't be overlooked. Correct. Just that much cooler. (laughs) (laughs) Joe, what's your first pick this month? So my first pick, um, Shocker, is um, a YA thriller suspense horror story. This is The Forest Demands Its Due by Kosoko Jackson, and this one is out October 12th. This is described as a lesson in vengeance meets the taking of Jake Livingston in this page-turning YA horror fantasy set in dark academia about a queer Black teen who discovers the sinister history of his boarding school and the corrupt powers behind it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all good words so far. (laughs) Emma's face is shook. (laughs) Regent Academy has a long and storied history in Winslow, Vermont, as does the forest that surrounds it. The school is known for molding teens into leaders, but its history is far more nefarious. 17-year-old Douglas Jones wants nothing to do with Regent's kingmaking. He ju- he's just trying to survive. But then a student is murdered, and for some reason, by the next day, no one remembers him having ever existed, except for Douglas and the groundkeeper's son, Everett Everly. In his determination to uncover the truth, Douglas awakens a horror hidden within the forest, unearthing secrets that have been buried for centuries. A vengeful creature wants blood as payment for a debt more than 300 years in the making, or it will swallow all of Winslow in darkness. And for the first time in his life, Douglas might have a chance to grasp the one thing he's always felt he was missing, power. But if he's not careful, he will find out that power has a tendency to corrupt absolutely everything. It's a high-octane mystery of murder and magic for fans of Ace of Spades, House of Hollow, and Get Out. So that is The Forest Demands Its Due by Kosoko Jackson, out October 12th. cover looks so scary. The cover looks so, like, creepy and cool. Mm -hmm. And I know this is, like, such an expected pick from me, but (laughs) it, it just sounds so... I think I... This one popped up like three months ago, and I threw it in my notes like, okay, when we get to October, book one is set. (laughs) No, it's perfect for October, and I love this pick. Right. It's so good. Dark Academia. I mean, it's an episode of Supernatural for sure. (laughs) I said it this time, not you. You said it, so I can say (laughs) anything that's reminiscent of the Winchester Brothers Supernatural vibes, we absolutely will not miss Sign out on me that. Up. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a lovely segue into my next pick, which is a little bit fantasy, a little bit thriller, a little bit literary. And that is The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. This is out on October 17th. So in the small mountain town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Farrow is waiting for fate to find her. The Pharaoh women are known for their thriving, wow, that's a tongue twister, known for their thriving flower farm and the mysterious curse that's plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Pharaoh's disappearance, leaving June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that weren't there, Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. The signs of what June always knew was coming. But June is determined to end the curse once and for all, even if she must sacrifice finding love and having a family of her own. 
After her grandmother's death, June discovers a series of cryptic clues regarding her mother's decades-old disappearance, except they only lead to more questions. But could the door she once assumed was a hallucination be the answer she's been searching for? The next time it appears, June realizes she can touch it and walk past the threshold. And when she does, she embarks on a journey that will not only change both the past and the future, but also uncover the lingering mysteries of her small town and entangle her heart in an epic star-crossed love. With the unmaking of June Farrow, Adrienne Young delivers a brilliant novel of romance, mystery, and a touch of the impossible, a story you will never forget. So that is The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young out on October 17th. Oh, that sounds so good and creepy. Yeah, there's that mystery there. There's that like, like, is she hallucinating? What is going on elements? There is an epic love, apparently. There's disappearances. There's obviously something fantastical with a mystical door. So all the bits we love. All the bits we love. And I am going to go not quite the same direction, but a little similar. This is a kind of a magical realism element to it. So this is Let Us Descend by Jessamine Ward. And this one is out October 24th. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit for it. Uh, but I could not not bring this up. I mean, if you haven't heard of Jessamine Ward, where have you been? She's a two-time National Book Award winner. She's the youngest winner of the Library of Congress Prize for Fiction and a MacArthur Fellow. So she's bringing us a haunting masterpiece, sure to be an instant classic about an enslaved girl in the years before the Civil War. Let Us Descend is a reimagining of American slavery, as beautifully rendered as it is heart-wrenching. Searching, harrowing, replete with transcendent love, the novel is a journey from the rice fields of the Carolinas to the slave markets of New Orleans and into the fearsome heart of, of a Louisiana sugar plantation. Annis, sold south by the white enslaver who fathered her, is the reader's guide through the hellscape. As she struggles through the miles-long march, Annis turns inward, seeking comfort from memories of her mother and stories of her African warrior grandmother. Throughout, she opens herself to a world beyond this world, one teeming with spirits of earth and water, of myth and history, spirits who nurture and give, and those who manipulate and take. While Ward leads readers through the descent, this, her fourth novel, is ultimately a story of rebirth and reclamation. From one of the most singularly brilliant and beloved writers of her generation, this miracle of a novel inscribes Black African grief and joy into the very land, the rich but unforgiving forest, swamps, and rivers of the American South. Let Us Descend is Jessamine Ward's most magnificent novel yet, a masterwork for the ages. That's quite a bit of praise and Oh, I'm so excited to read this. Like, oh, it's gonna, it's it's gonna hit me. Like, it's gonna be a punch in the gut. But I am excited for this. So that is "Let Us Descend" by Jessamine Ward, out October 24th. It sounds so good, and I will be the most annoying human in the land and say that also the cover is lovely. It's stunning. I can't wait to read it. My next pick. I should have coordinated better because we're just veering like into complete Emma territory that's not at all related to like literary all star Jasmine Ward. <laughs> I mean, I went from YA thriller to literary all star Jasmine Ward. That's so true. So I'm, we are I'm swerving just all over the map this month, but we usually are. My next pick is a book that I think we talked about in our summer camp episode a few months ago now. I don't even, the t what is time? <laughs> and that book is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. This comes out October 3rd. And this is sort of the second book in her Maple Hills universe. So if you read that TikTok sensation icebreaker, this is in that same universe. So this follows Maple Hills students, Russ Callahan and Aurora Roberts, they cross paths at a party celebrating the end of the academic year where they're playing a drinking game as you do at a college party, and they end up having a passionate one-night stand. Never one to overstay her welcome, Aurora slips away before Russ even has a chance to ask for her full name. And that makes it all the more surprising when they both show up for the first day of summer camp as counselors and bump into each other. <laughs> where they're both going to be all summer. 
Uh, They really need camp to work. They're trying to escape complicated home lives and just want to spend the summer working at camp. Russ is hoping that if he gets far enough away from Maple Hills, he can avoid dealing with the repercussions of his father's gambling addiction. And Aurora is tired of craving attention from everyone around her, and she just wants to go to the place that she felt truly at home, and that was camp. So Russ knows that breaking the camp's super strict, no fraternizing rule will have them heading back to Maple Hills before the summer is over. Aurora doesn't seem to care so much about the rules, uh, but will they be able to peacefully coexist? Or did their one night together start a fire they couldn't put out? Start a fire they can't put out. (laughs) That is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. Out October 3rd, having read Icebreaker, I have no doubts that Wildfire will be plenty fiery. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> it looks so cute i said it then i was gonna throw that one in my list so <laughs> can't be mad at it excited to have it hit well now that you read romance now that i read romance <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now that i've read a total of like six romances <laughs> So Tokyo drifting in another direction yet again, my next pick is a YA graphic novel. Thought this one would be fun. It's called Brooms by Jasmine Walls. It's 1930s Mississippi. Magic is permitted only in certain circumstances and by certain people. Unsanctioned broom racing is banned, but for those who need the money or the thrills, it's there to be found. Meet Billy May, captain of the Night Storm's racing team, and Loretta, her best friend and second in command. They're determined to make enough money to move out west to a state that allows Black folks to legally use magic and take part in national races. Cheng Quan doing her best to handle the delicate and dangerous double act of being the perfect son to her parents and being true to herself while racing. Maddie and Emma, Choctaw and Black, the youngest of the group and trying to dodge government officials who want to send them and their newly surfaced powers away to boarding school, and Luella in love with Billy May. Her powers were sealed away years ago after she fought back against the government. She'll do anything to prevent the same fate for her cousins. Brooms is a queer, witchy, fast and the furious, see why I said Tokyo Drift, that shines light on history not not often told. It's everything you'd want to read in a graphic novel. So that is Brooms by Jasmine Walls, out October 10th. I love that one. And the cover is cute. The cover is cute. It seems fun, moving, magical. Um, I know I'm not usually a, a historical fiction reader, but I love this kind of like reimagined American history. So, and I love that it is. Is it a comic or graphic mm-hmm. novel? Yeah. yeah, it's a graphic novel. Well, Bra- comic and graphic book. <laughs> I love when you can present history in a format like a graphic novel. Same, same. I don't know why. Just cool. No, it's an easy, I think it's an easier way to digest. Like to me, it helps some of those lessons set in a little better. I think that makes sense. And right. Cause I don't really read like historical Mm -hmm. anything. So this is a great entree into learning a a bit more about real things. Yeah. Keep my learning up. Absolutely. Even now as adults. My next pick is the conclusion of a series. I don't really need to say tons about this, so I will keep this one brief. This is uh, the last book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy by Stephanie Garber. So we have A Curse for True Love. This is out October 24th, so we do have to wait until the end of the month. I have had this book on pre-order since January of this year. I think so eagerly anticipating the conclusion to Evangeline and Jax. I have a lot of thoughts about this series, but I will wait until the conclusion of the trilogy to finalize them. So we return to Evangeline Fox. She ventured to the magnificent North in search of her happy ending. And it seems as if she has it. She's married to a handsome prince lives in a legendary castle But Evangeline has no idea of the devastating price she's paid for this fairy tale. She doesn't know what she has lost, and her husband is determined to make sure she never finds out. But first, he must kill Jax, the Prince of Hearts. 
Now that's not giving us much to go on. And I think the conclusion of this is like under lock and key. So I don't know that we're going to get anything else until the book is out, but I don't really think we need anything else. We want to see where these characters end up. And so once, um, once we have a curse for true love out on October 24th, we will see who Evangeline ends up with. I know that lots of people are rooting for Jax, the Prince of Hearts. So it's going to be epic. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> we will. We'll have to talk about it a little bit in our November picks once it's out and I've had a chance to read it. Read and digest. Absolutely. I'm really interested to know where it goes. And I do know that the the way that the I have seen on Stephanie's Instagram, the way that the book ends is the way that it's supposed to. But there are some bonus additions floating out there with some bonus content that have some fun alternate endings. So I am just oh. intrigued by the whole thing to see what's what and try to get my hands on some of that bonus content as well. I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. It's so wild to see the like alternate scenes, alternate endings in the book world. I know. And it's, she stated like, it's not canon. The the other stuff is just bonus. It's just fun. Okay. So, so you're, you're not, not missing, missing out. out on anything because that wouldn't be fair. Like that's not the point of the bonus content. Right. But I am intrigued to know what those alternate endings are. Without a doubt. So- my next pick is The List by Yomi Adegoke. This is uh, listed as a sensational page-turning debut novel where a high-profile female journalist's world is upended when her fiancé's name turns up in a viral social media post. Ola Olajide, a celebrated journalist at Women Magazine, is set to marry the love of her life in one month's time. Young, beautiful, and successful, she and her fiancé Michael are considered the couple goals of their social network and seem to have it all. That is, until one morning when they both wake up to the same message. Oh my god, have you seen the list? It began as a crowdsourced collection of names and somehow morphed into an anonymous account posting allegations on social media. Ola would usually be the first to support such a list. She'd retweet it, call for the men to be fired, write article after article, except this time, Michael's name is on the list. Compulsively readable, wildly entertaining, and filled with sharp social insight, the list is a piercing and dazzlingly clear-sighted debut about secrets, lies, and the internet. Perfect for fans of Such a Fun Age, Luster, and My Dark Vanessa, this is a searing portrait of these modern times and our morally complicated online culture. So that is The List by Yomi Arigoke, out October 3rd. I like the idea that we're diving into kind of like the impact of social media and, uh, you know, kind of policing and what we're, how we're holding people accountable and what that looks like and how that can impact someone's life. Yeah. I like that. We're starting to see that in fiction or even nonfiction, like in literature, the impact that social media has on people on this generation and how I love that we're sort of digging into that. Yeah. I'm, I'm really into it. This sounds really good. Speaking of books that sound really good, but also have romancy cute covers, <laughs> is my next pick, A Holly Jolly Ever After by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. If you saw this time last year, they co authored A Merry Little Meet Cute that I saw all over my social medias at the end of last year. They have returned for another co-authored book in that same, again, universe world. Uh, I don't want to say series because that implies that you have to read everything. And I don't think you do with this. It just sort of follows similar characters. So this follows Callum Lieberman. He's the funny one. As the arguably lesser of the three former members of the boy band, INK, he enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame and then moved home where he opened a regional pizza chain called Slice Slice Baby. He's living his best dad bod life, hooking up with bridesmaids at all the friends' weddings. But after an old one-off sex tape is leaked and quickly goes viral, Callum decides he's ready to step into the spotlight again, starring in a sexy Santa biopic for the Hope Channel. Then we have Winnie Baker. 
When he did everything right, she married her childhood sweetheart, avoided the downfalls of adolescent stardom, and transitioned into a stable adult acting career. Hell, she even waited until marriage to have sex. But after her perfect life falls apart, Winnie is ready to redefine herself, and what better way than a steamier-than-steaming hot mug of cider Christmas movie? With decade-old Hollywood history between them, Winnie and Callum are both feeling hesitant about their new situation as co-stars, especially Winnie, who can't seem to fake on-screen pleasure she's never experienced in real life. She's willing to do the research for science and artistic authenticity, and there's no better research partner than her bridesmaid sex tape Hall of Fame co-star, Callum. But suddenly, Callum's teenage crush on Winnie is bubbling to the surface, and Winnie might be catching feelings herself. They say opposites attract, but is this holly jolly ever after really ready for its close-up? Come on. People can really write a description sometimes. So that is Holly Jolly Ever After by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. I don't even think I said this, but this comes out October 10th. Yes. It's so cheesy. I love it. Did you see that they put out a Christmas in July novella? Yes. Snow Place Like LA. That's I can't. hilarious. I, I love can't. it. I can't. And this pairing. If this is their thing now of like doing a like a yep. holiday title and a Christmas in July. Like I'm into yeah. it. Am I going to read them? Who knows? But I love the theater of it. They're steamy. <laughs> they're, they've got that like sort of hallmarky element. And I'm sorry, like the former member of a boy band timing has everyone seen all the things NSYNC has been doing lately uh-huh. all over my for you page. That they're trying to like come back. They, if they reunite, I told my husband, I will sell our home. I will sell my car. I will be going to the reunion tour. I will be going. So I think that this is fortuitous timing that we've also got a book with boy ba- former boy band member, I-N-K. <laughs> I-N-K. Well, um, what better segue could you have given me than talking about NSYNC when I'm about to talk about The Woman in Me by one Britney Spears. Perfect. So out on October 24th, this is The Woman in Me by Britney Spears. The Woman in Me is a brave and an astonishingly movie story, moving story about freedom, fame, motherhood, survival, faith, and hope. In June 2021, the whole world was listening as Britney Spears spoke in open court. The impact of sharing her voice, her truth, was undeniable, and it changed the course of her life and the lives of countless others. The Woman in Me reveals the first time, for the first time her incredible journey and the strength at the core of one of the greatest performers in pop music history. Written with remarkable candor and humor, Spears' groundbreaking book illuminates the enduring power of music and love and the importance of a woman telling her own story on her own terms at last. I know there's not a lot in that description because they just want us to read it, and I don't blame them, but that is The Woman in Me by Britney Spears, out October 24th. We're going to be waiting for this one, but I, I, I just, I want to hear it from her. That's all I can really say. Like, I want to hear it from her. I do too. I'm really interested to see what this book says. Right. I also am dying to know if she's going to do the audiobook. Oh, yeah. My next pick is Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. This is out on October 3rd. She wrote The Last Housewife. If you're familiar, I believe we talked about that book a lot last year with Jill. So for fans of Verity and A Flicker in the Dark, Midnight is the Darkest Hour is a twisted tale of murder, obsessive love, and the beastly urges that lie dormant within us all. Even the God-fearing folk of Bottom Springs, Louisiana. In her small hometown, librarian Ruth Cornier has always felt like an outsider, even as her beloved father rains fire and brimstone warnings from the pulpit at Holy Fire Baptist. Unfortunately for Ruth, the only things the townspeople fear more than the God and the devil are the myths that haunt the area, like the story of the low man, a vampiric figure said to steal into the sinner's bedrooms and kill them on moonless nights. When a skull is found deep in the swamp next to mysterious carved symbols, Bottom Springs is thrown into uproar, and Ruth realizes only she and Everett, an old friend with the dark past, 
have the power to comb the town's secret underbelly in search of true evil. A dark and powerful novel like fans have come to expect from Ashley Winstead, Midnight is the Darkest Hour is an examination of the ways we've come to expect love, religion, and stories to save us, the lengths we have to go in order to take back power, and the month monstrous work of being a girl in this world so claire mcintosh called this book where the crawdads sing meets twilight meets thelma and louise in a thriller so i am intrigued to say the least so that is midnight is the darkest hour by ashley winstead I'm into it. That sounds fantastic. And I have a friend I can already recommend it to because she is looking for more books like Verity. <laughs> oh, you have a list for me? Okay. I have a list for you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Please share that because she's dying. She's like, nothing has hit me like Verity has. <laughs> I was like, I'll ask Emma. My next pick is Family Meal by Brian Washington. This one is out October 10th. From the best-selling, award-winning author of Memorial and Lot comes an irresistible intimate novel about two young men, once best friends, whose lives collide again after a loss. Cam is living in Los Angeles and falling apart after the love of his life has died. Kai's ghost won't leave Cam alone, his spectral visits wild, tender, and unexpected. When Cam returns to his hometown of Houston, he crashes back into the orbit of his former best friend TJ and TJ's family bakery. TJ's not sure how to navigate this changed Cam, impenetrably cool and self-destructing, or their charged estrangement. Can they find a way past all that has been said and left unsaid to save each other? Could they find a way back to being okay again, or maybe even okay for the first time? When secrets and wounds become so insurmountable that they devour us from within, hope and sustenance and friendship can come from the most unlikely source. Spanning Los Angeles, Houston, and Osaka, Family Meal is a story about how the people who know us the longest can hurt us the most, but how they can also set the standard for love. With his signature generosity and eye for food, sex, love, and the moments that make us the most human, Brian Washington returns with a brilliant new novel. So that is Family Meal by Brian Washington, out October 10th. That sounds great. I love that Brian Washington has a new book coming out. My next pick is The Sun Sets in Singapore by Kennedy Fadipe. This is out October 31st, so you have to wait all the way to the end of the month. This just sounds so atmospheric and lovely, set in Singapore's nonstop sunshine. And if you look at the cover, you'll see it's immediately a vibe. The Lion City has gone by many names and is famous for many things. It's decadent street food, it's world-class shopping, it's lush gardens that burst with tropical blooms. But paradise is always hiding a snake. For Dara, a workaholic lawyer from the UK, Singapore is opportunity. Every day, brokering deals for her firm's wealthy clientele, she gets closer to her ultimate goal, making partner. For Amika, a sharp-tongued banker from Nigeria, Singapore is extravagance. Gucci, Prada, Hermes, she loves nothing more than to luxuriate in the major department stores that call her name on Orchard Road. And for Lillian, a former pianist turned trailing spouse from the U.S., Singapore is reinvention. In a stunning apartment with 360-degree views, the island seems to glitter as far as the eye can see. But complications are looming in the form of an enigmatic stranger whose presence exposes cracks in Singapore's beguiling facade. Dara's ambitions mean she has no life outside the firm, and her insecurities are threatening to derail the promotion she spent the last six years striving for. Amika is desperate to escape the chaos she left behind at home and hiding a spiraling shopping addiction that is, that's endangering her very sense of self. And while Lillian's life may be the envy of outsiders, a new obsession is imperiling everything and everyone around her. In The Sun Sets in Singapore, Kennedy Fadape captures the richness of this metropolis through the eyes of three tenacious women who are about to learn that unfinished history can follow you anywhere no matter how far you run from home. So, oh. so good. The sun sets in Singapore out October 31st. The atmosphere, the cover. Ooh, Singapore. <laughs> yeah, I love this. It sounds great. It's just a really good, like, friendship tale. Absolutely. And I like that each woman is working through their own things and that all sort of comes together in the same setting. So I'm really, really intrigued by this one. Without a doubt. 
My last two kind of go together or they are of a theme. So first I have Mary and the Birth of Frankenstein by Anne Egoot. And this one is out October 3rd. So this is an intensely gripping reimagining of Mary Shelley's youth, vividly exploring innocence, young love, gothic mystery, and the roots of her literary masterpiece, Frankenstein. In Switzerland, 1816, a volcanic eruption in Indonesia envelops the whole of Europe in ash and cloud. Amid this year without a summer, 18-year-old Mary Shelley and her lover Percy by Shelley arrive at Lake Geneva to visit Lord Byron and his companion John Polidori. Anguished by the recent loss of her child, Mary spends her days in strife, but come nightfall, the friends while away rainy, wine-soaked evenings gathered around the fireplace, exchanging stories. One famous evening, Byron issues a challenge to write the best ghost story. Contemplating what to write, Mary recalls another summer when she was 14. That takes us to Scotland, 1812, where a guest of the Baxter family, Mary arrives in Dundee, befriending young Isabella Baxter. The girls soon spend hours together, wandering through fields and forests, concocting tales about mythical Scottish creatures, ghosts, and monsters roaming the lowlands. As their bond deepens, Mary and Isabella's feelings for each other intensify. But someone has been watching them, the charismatic and vaguely sinister Mr. Booth, Isabella's older brother-in-law, who may not be as benevolent as he purports to be. With gripping mastery and verve, Anne Eckhout brings to life a defining moment in Mary Shelley's youth, the creative wellspring for one of the most original, thrilling, and timeless pieces of literature ever written. Provocative, wonderfully atmospheric, and pulsing with emotion, Mary and the Birth of Frankenstein is a hypnotic ode to the power of imagination. So that is Mary and the Birth of Frankenstein by Anne Eckhout out October 3rd. And uh, just a note that it is translated from Dutch and that is done by Laura Watkinson. So literature and translation on top of it all. <laughs> that sounds so cool. Right? Perfect for October. I know. Got the, got the Halloween vibe set. Yeah. So my last pick is really not one I think we need to talk tons about, but I had to put it in here. And it is Making It So by Patrick Stewart. This is out October 3rd. The memoir from his perspective, I'm just so interested to hear what he has to say, what he wants to write about. And I believe he's doing the audio book. So this will definitely be one I'm going to be checking out in audio. I just want to hear about his life. That's it. <laughs> so excited for this one. Like, how could I, number one, not want to listen to him read to me, but to yeah. just not want to hear about his life? Like, what a, a whole career. Yes, exactly. So, like, briefly, we know from the description, he'll talk about his beginnings in Yorkshire, England, to the height of Hollywood fame. He'll talk about Star Trek and X-Men. So I just absolutely can't wait to hear his definitive story from the actor himself. So that is Making It So by Patrick Stewart out October 3rd. Oh, cannot wait. My last one is an odd pick from me because this is a Jane Austen retelling. I know, I know, but this is The Scandalous Confessions of Lydia Bennett, Witch by Melinda Taub. So it's kind of got a me twist and, you know, Jane Austen retellings are very often better than actual Jane Austen. Lev Grossman describes this as a witty, magical, romantic, and altogether brilliant reimagining of Pride and Prejudice, told from the perspective of the troublesome and, according to her, much maligned youngest Bennett sister, Lydia. So it's an exuberant retelling of Pride and Prejudice, where Lydia Bennett puts pen to paper to relate the real events of the aftermath of the classic story. Some facts are well known. Mrs. Bennett suffers from her nerves, Mr. Bennett suffers from Mrs. Bennett, and all five daughters suffer from an estate that is entailed only to male heirs. But Lydia also suffers from entirely different concerns. Her best loved sister Kitty is really a barn cat. Wickham is every bit as wicked as the world believes him to be, but what else one would but what else would one expect from a demon? And if Mr. Darcy is uptight about etiquette, that's nothing compared to his feelings about magic. Most of all, Lydia has yet to learn that for a witch, promises have power. Full of enchantment, intrigue, and boundless magic, the scandalous confessions of Lydia Bennett, which has all the irreverent wit, strength, and romance of Pride and Prejudice while offering a highly unexpected redemption from the wildest Bennett sister. So that is the scandalous confessions of Lydia Bennett, which 
by Melinda Taub out October 3rd. That sounds fantastic. And I think we have a jam packed October ahead of us. We really do. So thank you all so much for listening today and checking out our October picks. Let us know what you will be adding to your TBR on our social media post for today's episode. We are so excited to hear from you. But thank you all so much for listening and happy reading. Happy reading. Readers can sample and borrow the titles mentioned in today's episode on overdrive.com and our library friends can purchase these titles in Marketplace. Professional Book Nerds is proud to be an Evergreen Podcast signature program. To learn about other Evergreen Podcasts, visit evergreenpodcast.com. Our podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Emma Dwyer and Joe Skelly and presented by Overdrive. To learn more, visit professionalbooknerds.com.